Joined on the line now by Dr. Sebastian Gorka, MAGA Coalition Chief Strategist and former Deputy Assistant to the President, Dr. Gorka. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for yesterday. It was very kind of you. It was Dr. Gorka's birthday yesterday. I uh, I'm sorry I didn't uh, I didn't get you a uh, get you a cake a maga cake. That's uh, I, sh- I really did. I should have done that actually. That would have been quite good. I hope you enjoyed it, Dr. Gorka. Thank you for joining us here I, this morning. I did. I had a wonderful birthday. Thank you. Great to be on the show. Excellent. Now on to some starker matters. Um, what are U.S. troops doing in Niger? I, 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 I and, and honestly, it's an honest question because I haven't been following this and I rely on people like you uh, to walk us and this audience through uh, on this issue. But people are calling it uh, uh, Donald Trump's Benghazi, President Trump's Benghazi. Um, what uh, what are the facts behind this? Well, the, what, the short answer to what they're doing in uh, Niger is very mm. simple. They're dealing with the catastrophic aftermath of Hillary Clinton and President Obama's Libya policy. Mm. Uh, The the fact is uh, we, as a nation, uh, intervened in Libya against Muammar Gaddafi, rather Hillary had a plan to do so. Uh, She she very uh, coldly said one day, uh, we intervened and he's dead, if you remember that famous quote from her. And that was about the extent of their strategic planning. There was no uh, plan for what would happen after a man who'd been in power for decades was swept out of his position. That's what happens when you follow uh, the French into war. (laughs) Uh, That can be the case. That can be the case. (laughs) And and what happened is uh, Libyan uh, capabilities, weapons, flooded the whole of the Sahel region, uh, south and west, including Mm. Niger. The armed forces of Niger were not capable of dealing with all the jihadis that are roaming across the ungoverned spaces of that uh, region. Mm. And as such, uh, we have deployed about 6,000 the special forces and other troops across the whole continent to assist local forces as trainers, as advisors, to make them more able to maintain sovereignty in their own countries. And that's uh, the uh, the uh, individuals that were recently killed, the Green Berets, were part of a mission to assist local forces in their response to the threat of the jihadis roaming across the whole of the Sahel region. Now you have this uh, rodeo clown, as, as, as she has been uh, so aptly named uh, Frederica Wilson, uh, calling this Mr. Trump's Benghazi. What is the what is the response to that? Well, first, a little bit of consternation and head scratching. I thought Benghazi wasn't a problem, and <laughs> there's nothing negative. Um, the, the parallels, of, of course, asinine and befit a, a clown like this congresswoman, mm. uh, because in Benghazi, what you had is a diplomatic installation. Uh, the leader of which the ambassador had requested dozens of times for there to be security upgrades because of the the danger of the militant jihadi threat in the region. Hillary Clinton had denied those security updates, and on the anniversary of 9-11, he was murdered with a a State Department employee and a um, pair of contractors. So this has nothing to do with Green Berets doing their jobs, because this is their job, going into these kinds of areas to be insurgents or to help local governments fight their insurgent threats. That's what Green Berets do. So the comparison couldn't be more stupid if you tried. Uh, and on top of it, it's very interesting to see the Dems now say Benghazi is a bad thing. I guess I guess we should d- dig more into Benghazi if Benghazi was a bad thing then. I do have a feeling that uh, that Frederica Wilson will try. However, she seems to have been one-upping herself um, in stupidity uh, day in, day out, uh, at least over the last... I'm doing a great job. I'm doing yeah, a, a fantastic job. Couldn't have asked for a better spokesperson for the Democrats at the moment. If you had asked me to choose somebody for the other side to, to be their torchbearer right now, uh, it would be it would be her, honestly. Just just fantastic job. Well done to the Democrats. We're kind of seeing, uh, uh, Dr. Gorker, we're kind of seeing the Republican primary uh, of, of, of 2011 playing out inside the Democrat Party at the moment. People see it sort of rising and falling every couple of weeks. You had Maxine Waters being the... Being being the uh, steward for a while, uh, you've had, and now you've got, uh, uh, um, you know, Frederica Wilson. Next one is going to be Sherrod, Sherrod Brown. Uh, I feel with his, his latest comments about about Steve Bannon being a white supremacist. And by the way, I offered him five hundred bucks to charity if he would debate me on the matter. That's now up to oh, eleven hundred. I'd pay to watch that. 
That's up to twelve hundred bucks now, by the way. People on Twitter saying that they'll join in. Twelve hundred dollars, by the way, if Sherrod Brown debates me on that issue. And and I will donate that money, by the way, to the St. Vincent Charity Medical Center, which is combating the opioid epidemic in Ohio, Sherrod Brown's uh, uh, constituency. So let's see, let's see if he if he really cares about his constituents and the opioid crisis enough to debate his own talking points. Um, sorry to get off topic a little bit there, Dr. Gorka, um, but it, 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 it keeps flagging up for me on Twitter, people chucking me in money left, right, and center, so that's great, because we do need to have this debate, and I did want to ask you about it. You've got Mitch McConnell out there. You have his former chief of staff out there. You've got Sherrod Brown out there. All of these guys reusing the same old talking points, white supremacist, racist, xenophobe, all of this sort of thing. And what we saw when you guys went down to Alabama, that great coalition of people that helped Judge Roy Moore cross the line in Alabama to defeat the establishment's Luther Strange. Uh, it just seems like they've, they've, they've reached the end now of, of you know, where they can attack, and they're going right back to the beginning. It feels like we're going right back to 2014 here. 14. No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I, I'm a bit leery of discussing this publicly across the airwaves with <laughs> millions of people to listen to your show because I want the Dems to keep doing this. I mean, yes. I mean, this is just absolutely fabulous for the president, for the president's agenda, mm. for my super PAC, the MAGA coalition, and everybody else. Just double down on the stuff that made you lose the last time. <laughs> Roll out Bernie Sanders again. More, more interviews with Hillary. It's just absolutely fabulous because it means one thing, that they have no idea, absolutely not an inkling of what actually happened in America November the 8th. Uh, so roll on democrat party doing what you do so well you know i was in um, i was in california this uh, this weekend uh, dr gorka and funny enough i i found a liberal uh, i i started chatting to a liberal <laughs> <laughs> and um uh, i i was i was saying just just precisely this stuff i said in the background of all the noise of all the craziness of all the of even by the way all of president trump's craziness that i'm convinced he does on purpose to distract yeah. people away there are there are significant things going on and one of those significant things dr gorka is the absolute decimation and nearly the complete annihilation of the Islamic State. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about how since January the U.S. government has actually managed and the U.S. armed forces have actually managed to stop this, this, this heinous fighting terrorist force that, 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 that Obama just couldn't seem to deal with? Yeah, this is, this is the biggest untold story since the inauguration. Remember, we were told for so many years that the fight against ISIS is a generational problem, that, that you know, my children and uh, everybody's children will be fighting this war. And Well, not quite. Uh, we changed the rules of engagement, literally, uh, on, on the morning of January the 21st. We allowed our military to do the job they were trained to do. Uh, Secretary Mattis replaced this uh, technically, it's called a, a war of attrition. I like to call it dickering at the edges of the problem, just nibbling at the edges, because we weren't serious about war under President Obama, but that was replaced by a war of annihilation. And as I remember, the third week of my time in the White House, a tier one operator, a special operator who was on detail to the NSC, said to me, without, with no apropos, he said, it's amazing what we can do right now. And his buddies, you know, he's you know, sitting in D.C., kind of chagrined that he can't be with his buddies in theater. And he said, we are stacking the ISIS jihadis like cordwood. And that's what we've been doing. No stone upon stone. And, and as a result, Mosul fell, the area where the city, where the caliphate was declared by Abu Bakr al-Baghdad, it's sort of spiritual center of gravity. And then just now, Raqqa, which is the operational headquarters of ISIS. So it's stunning that in just a matter of weeks and a few months, uh, this president and his military have managed to do that which the president could not achieve against the JV team given years to do so. Massive, massive story. And in the last 12 hours, Dr. Gorka, uh, the, the U.S.-backed Syrian Democrat forces, the alliance of Kurds and Arabs there, uh, captured one of, the, one of Syria's largest oil fields in the Deir el-Zur province. Mm -hmm. This is, it's, it's, it, I mean, it is, that is a major, major strategic victory, is it not? Right, because you need money. I mean, ISIS was making hand over fist not only by local taxation, not only by external funders, 
but by taking over the local uh, oil resources and the, the refining centers. So you know, you, to be an insurgency takes money. And uh, by taking away this plant, uh, we're just basically shutting off their capacity to further uh, execute operations regionally or outside of theater. So it is a, another great win. So it is, it, it is incredible. They were making, you know, five five million dollars per month. I think at their peak off oil sale uh, revenues. Uh, now, in, you know, thirty thousand barrels a day being produced at this particular field uh, that has now been taken back. It's such a major uh, a major uh, achievement, and it's one that I don't think would have happened. You tell me, would have happened if Hillary Clinton had been president? No, I look. It, it, it beggars belief to imagine what had happened, what would have happened if uh, the woman who said we need no borders in the Western Hemisphere, a, a woman who was responsible for the disasters in Libya, responsible for the disastrous response uh, to the Benghazi attack, if that individual had been at the reins of power and had been the commander in chief, you know, I mentally I don't even want to go there because of the threat that would have represented to U.S. national security for years. Well, luckily, we don't need to go there, at least for another three years, where no doubt she throws her uh, hat back into the ring. Alongside Please, That would be wonderful. <laughs> alongside the cowboy hat of Frederica Wilson, obviously, as well. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sebastian Gorka, thank you again so much for joining us here on Breitbart News Daily. Thank you, Raheem. God bless you and all the listeners.